Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Today I thought we would kind of do a chit chatty style video talking about some of the things I will most likely never do as a booktuber. Now, never say never, right? There is every possibility in the future that some of these may change, but for right now, these are the things that I don't think I will ever be doing as a booktuber. Now, of course, if you create booktube content or YouTube content in general and you do these things, no shade, no shame, you do you. They are just personally things that I don't feel are right for my channel. Now, this is not my original idea in any way, shape, or form. I've been seeing this floating around on booktube primarily from Ashley over at Bookish Realm and Isabel over at Happy For Now. I will be sure to link their videos down below for you to go and check out. I did create kind of an outline of some topics that I wanted to discuss in this video but I have no idea what I'm actually going to say in regards to those topics so this could be a little bit chaotic but what else is new? Welcome to my channel. I think I have around 10 different points that I want to talk about today so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in. Also I should say that these are really in no particular order. They are just listed in the order as I thought of them and wrote them down. So the first thing that I'm likely not going to be doing as a booktuber are dedicated videos to one specific book. So a book review video for one book only. Now I myself do not watch those videos and I personally do not think that there is enough of an audience for those videos. Even if your video is not going to be spoiler filled, a lot of people don't necessarily want in-depth reviews on these books before they go ahead and read them. So you're going to need to find the person that has read the book and is interested in your thoughts and they want to hear a review, spoiler filled or not, about the story. And so I just don't think that there's a wide enough audience for those things. And a lot of those videos, I think in order to attract even a decent audience, would need to be more focused on new releases. That is just never something that I have really been interested in doing on booktube and it's not something that I watch on booktube. You are going to hear all of the thoughts on the books that I'm reading in the wrap-ups that I do on a monthly basis or in the vlogs that I do sometimes but I'm never just going to sit down and intentionally film a video for one book. If I'm going to do that it's probably going to be like vlog style and it's going to be due to popular demand. It's really not something that I'm going to sit down and film a formal video like this for one book. Now this isn't really something that comes up all that often but something that you're never going to really hear me do on booktube is downplay how much work it actually takes to create booktube content or just YouTube content in general. I'm only speaking about booktube because it's my own personal experience. I don't have experience creating any other type of YouTube content. I feel that there is a misconception about how easy it is to create content on booktube or YouTube in general and I'm never going to be dishonest about what it actually takes to maintain a booktube channel because most of what it takes to create this content on a regular basis is stuff that you don't see. So there's definitely a lot of front end planning going on. Then there's the time that it actually takes to sit down and film the video and then all of the back end editing and stuff like that that goes into it. So I will sit down and I will plan out the content that I hope to film and put out over the coming weeks. I'm not necessarily planning what I'm going to be saying in those videos. I'm just going to like kind of plan out the topics of the videos and maybe some of the points that I want to hit on. I'm also doing any necessary research or things like that making sure that I'm adequately prepared and then of course on the day of filming I'm making sure that I'm at least somewhat presentable for the camera. So there's definitely a lot of prep and planning that goes in prior to filming the video and then of course there's also the time that it takes to actually sit down and film the video and I don't know about anybody else but it always takes me way longer to film a video than I think that it's going to. On my filming days I'm typically spending two to three hours alone just sitting down and filming videos and then on the back end of course editing is for sure what takes me the longest amount of time especially because I consider myself a pretty tight editor. Now I'm not necessarily a good editor. I'm not saying that I'm a good editor but I'm trying to be a tight editor and because of that editing can take way longer than the actual filming process. So let's say that I have a video that is only 20 minutes of raw footage, it can take me around two to three hours of editing that video start to finish. So that's editing the raw footage, getting it to where it needs to be, it's exporting it, it's filling out all of the details in my YouTube description, creating the thumbnail and all of that stuff. And it's not just difficult in terms of time and energy expenditure and the physical process of it, but it can also be pretty mentally taxing as well. And I'm not just talking about in terms of all of the stuff that you have to think about when you're prepping and filming the videos. I'm also talking about like comparison. You know, they say that comparison is the thief of joy. So I definitely try not to do that, but it can definitely be discouraging being on booktube when you're seeing content creators that are similar to you but yet they're growing at a much faster rate than you are or they seem to have a lot more engagement than you do on your channel and so I can't help but wonder if that is a me thing. That's where the mental aspects of creating content on booktube comes out. So there have definitely been days during my time as a booktuber and this is kind of going to go into my next point but there have definitely been moments in my time as a booktube where I have wondered if there is a place for me on booktube whether there's a space for me here whether I am the type of booktube content creator that people want 
want to watch. So there's definitely also a big mental expenditure that can sometimes go into creating content on YouTube. Then moving into my next point, something that I'm not likely going to be doing on booktube and it's not something I think any of y'all expect me to do, but I'm not going to hide my personality or sacrifice my own personal beliefs and values to create a community on my booktube channel. But kind of like what I was saying earlier, there are some times when I wonder if there is a space for me on booktube. If I am the type of content creator that most people want to see, is it a me thing? Is it something about me that makes people not want to watch or not want to stick around? And if it is a me thing, then that is just something that I have to accept and deal with as a content creator on booktube. I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Not everybody is going to like me or love me or appreciate me. And I don't expect that at all, but I'm not going to be able to hide myself or my thoughts or my feelings just in order to create community on YouTube. And that just kind of stems from the fact that throughout my life, I have sometimes been made to feel like I am a lot or I'm too much. I'm a naturally loud person. That is always how I've been. I talk loudly. I don't notice it. It's just the natural range of my voice. I also feel like I often have a big personality and I can be very opinionated. And that is just not something that I feel the need to tamper down or hide anymore, especially as I get older. So when you're on my channel, you are definitely getting me and my personality in my videos. And especially if you participate in my weekly reading sprints, you are going to see a lot more of that personality and my hot takes. A lot of hot takes go on in sprints. It's a good time. So yeah, that is really not something that I'm willing to do on my booktube channel just in order to kind of like build a larger community, if that makes sense. Another thing that you're really not going to see on my YouTube channel is aesthetics. There are tons of channels out there. Like everything you can tell is one is very, very intentional. It is deliberate from the angle of their shots to the editing that they are putting into it. It is all very aesthetic and it looks a certain way. If you have the time, talent, the editing capabilities to do that, I am supremely impressed by you for sure. But that is just not something that I'm going to be able to do or dedicate to. So my channel is not going going to be an aesthetic channel. And I just don't think I'm like a truly aesthetic person in real life. Now everybody's probably going to have very different definitions of what aesthetic is, but you know what I'm talking about, like these beautiful, bright, white, clean, crisp channels and vlogs and things like that. I feel like in terms of my vibe, it can be just a little bit more colorful and chaotic. And kind of along the same lines, something that you're really not going to see on my booktube channel is me creating content specifically because I know that it's going to get a lot of views and engagement. And I'm not just talking about posting videos with controversial opinions because sometimes I will make videos with controversial opinions and that's because I genuinely want to discuss that with y'all but I'm talking about like booktubers who come out with these really wacky and unique ideas and they'll do like vlogs on them and things like that like they'll do a vlog reading books that they read while they were in elementary school or so like these really interestingly unique themed reading vlogs which are good for the moment and I understand why they attract a lot of attention but I don't feel like they are the informative content that I'm necessarily looking for on booktube they are definitely a lot of fun but I'm not going to get much out of them beyond the video that I'm watching. And also I'm just going to be straight up honest. I don't have the time to go around and just read all of these random books specifically for a vlog. A lot of the times if I'm doing specific themed reading vlogs, these books were already on my radar or my TBR. And so I'm not going far out of my way in order to read these books and create the vlogs. There are just so many amazing books out there and life is already too short to get to those. And so why am I going to want to create content that's going to force me to read books that I might not otherwise have read? Now, if I'm doing reading challenges, that's different because I am challenging myself a little bit to read outside my comfort zone, but I'm not doing those challenges for content creation. In fact, the only time I mention the challenges is like when I'm doing my TBRs or my reading wrap ups or things like that. So I'm just going to say that you're probably not going to find a lot of really wacky, crazy, unique, super inventive video ideas that are just literally being created for views. I want the videos to be something that I personally want to watch, that I want to film, that I want to make, or something that maybe y'all requested. I'm totally willing to take requests. But for the most part, a lot of the content that I create is going to be very standard old school booktube content. That is what I like to watch and that is what I like to film. And I like the informative aspects of it because I come on here to learn about good books. And certainly I do like to have a lot of fun and stuff while I'm on here as well. But I do like the informative aspect of booktube content. These next two I'm going to kind of pair together as well because they really kind of do go hand in hand. Something that you will not likely see on my channel and I don't think I've done it on my channel to date is request an arc. I personally have no interest in arc whatsoever. And that's because I don't prioritize new releases. So that's also something that you're not going to see on my channel. I'm not going to prioritize new releases. And therefore, if I'm not prioritizing new releases, I don't need to prioritize getting a copy of a book before it is even released out into the public. There are so many incredible backlist books that are still on my radar and on my TBR that I need to get to. And I want to be able to focus on that. I don't want to have a huge backlist of books. Maybe in the future, if I've really whittled down that backlist TBR, then I could prioritize new releases going forward. But I don't feel the need to neglect my backlist in favor of new releases. The only reason why I 
I'm even reading new releases at all is because I don't want them sitting on my shelves for years and me losing interest in them. So as they're coming into me in like bookish subscription boxes or things like that, I'm trying to read them just to avoid them sitting on my shelves for a long time. So even if I'm super excited about a book, I'm not going to go and request an ARC because even if I'm super excited about it, I'm probably not going to read it right away. And to be honest, I see a lot of people requesting ARCs and just not reading them. Like I can't tell you how many content creators I see who use NetGalley and they go and they request all of these ARCs and then those ARCs just sit there for years and they're not even reading them. And then they continue to request more and more ARCs and I just don't understand that mentality. If you really want to request ARCs, that must mean you're very excited about this book. So excited that you want to read it before it's even actively available to the public, but yet they're not getting read. So that is definitely something that's really not going to be shown on my channel. If I'm approached by like a publisher to read an ARC, which is not something that has ever happened to me. I don't know if it will ever happen to me. I'm a pretty small channel, but if I was approached, I could possibly consider it if it is an author that I love, if it's a book that I'm really looking forward to. And I might not even do it then because ARCs don't typically have audiobooks and like 99% of what I read has to have an audiobook attached to it. So ARCs prioritizing new releases, that's not really something that you're going to see on my channel either. So my channel is not really going to be known for new release content. A lot of it is going to be backlist for the time being until I catch up on my backlist. And kind of along those same lines, you're never going to see me read a book just because it is popular or change my opinion on a book or an author just because it is popular. There are plenty of popular books and series and authors that I have absolutely no interest in or I have tried in the past and they just don't work for me and so I won't be proceeding with them in the future. I have no interest in reading a book just because it's popular. If it is a popular book that I want to read, it is because I genuinely like the synopsis of the story and it sounds like something that I would be interested in. In fact, the more popular a book is, the more icky I feel about wanting to read it and I will kind of like hold off on reading it until that popularity dies because I do feel like that popularity can influence my reading experience. So I'm never going to chase a book just because it is popular and the more popular it is, the more likely I'm going to wait for that popularity to die down before I do anything. So that is definitely not something that you're going to be seeing on my channel for sure. This probably should be obvious, but something I would never do is never lie about a book. I'm never going to lie and say that I've read a book when I haven't. I'm not going to lie and say that I liked a book when I didn't. I'm always going to give you my honest, unfiltered reactions to a book. Even if that makes me the unpopular outlier, I would never want to actually lie about how I feel about a book because then I'm not a booktuber that you can trust. So I'm always going to give you my honest thoughts on a story. That's just me wanting to be a trustworthy booktuber. And you're also never going to hear me label a book problematic and you're never going to hear me say that you should not read a book. I will always tell you my thoughts on what I disliked or liked about it and you can make your own thoughts on whether or not you want to read it. I've already discussed in depth my problem with problematic. In my bookish pet peeves video, I will try to remember to link that down below for you as well if you are interested. You will never hear me brand any content as problematic. That's another thing you will never see, although I'm just kind of wrapping it in with the previous point. I will also, of course, never shame a person for what they are reading. It really does trouble me when book elitists have an opinion on what should be considered literature and what should be considered worthy or valid reading. That's really not how this works. Every single book is a subjective experience to the person who is reading that book. Every single person gets something different out of the books that they are reading. And just because one person says that this genre or this book has merit doesn't necessarily believe that that is the case or that everybody should have those same feelings. And so I really don't care what anybody is reading as long as they are reading and that they can find the value overall in reading. But I will never shame a person for what they do or do not read. Everybody has their own tastes and preferences. We should be encouraging their reading. We should not be shaming them. And so I will never shame anybody for what they are reading. I want my channel to be a place where all readers can be welcome and feel safe and included and appreciated. So because of that, I will never ever shame anybody for what they read. And the last thing that I kind of want to talk to you about today, something that you are not likely going to see on my channel are big monthly or even bi-monthly book hauls. And I have a few reasons for this. One, um, definitely in the name of sustainability. Now I fully admit that I am a book collector and I am 100% a sucker for beautiful editions. I will certainly jump at the chance to own beautiful editions of some of my favorite books or books that are on my radar. So I will never truly claim that I am a purely sustainable person or that I am a true minimalist. I do try to be minimalist in a lot of other areas of my life, but book collecting is not one of them. But that doesn't mean that I'm not mindful about the books that I am purchasing. So a lot of the books that I'm purchasing outside of special editions or like book boxes, a lot of the books that I'm purchasing are purchased secondhand in an effort to be more sustainable with the way that I'm purchasing books and kind of along the lines of trying to be sustainable and mindful in my book buying purchases. I'm trying to be very intentional with the book buying because as I'm sure we are all deeply aware of, we have a limited time here on earth to actually read books that we are bringing into our home. It doesn't bring me comfort to have a large physical TBR of books that I know I will probably never read. I would much rather have a manageable 
tangible physical TBR of books that I'm super crazy excited about and I know that that excitement will never wane that I will always want to read these books and that I have them if I ever want to read them and so because of that you're not going to see huge book hauls on my channel very often and you're going to see normal book hauls maybe once a quarter and I'm hoping that anytime I do a book haul a lot of them or the majority of them will be books that I have already read and so I'm not actually adding anything to my TBR. Alright y'all I think that is it for this video. Those are just some of the things that I don't ever anticipate doing as a booktuber or being on my booktube channel. Please comment down below and let me know if you are a booktube content creator some things that you don't do on your channel or if you are a big consumer of booktube videos some things that you do or do not like seeing in booktube videos I would love to know. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give this a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you would like to connect with me on any other platform I always leave links to my Instagram, Goodreads, and IG threads down below. In terms of booktube I aim to post one video a week sometimes two depending on what I could do and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.